which are unskippable, but the dialogue is excellent. So, uh, basically to start off with, we wake up as Edward Carnby, recent amnesiac, and we are introduced to two mechanics. We can look around, and we can blink. Alright, so here we go. This is my new dad. Look at me. So for this first little bit, I've got to brink periodically to clear my vision, because I've got blurry eyes. Christ. It's truly like a baby fucking vegetable. Thanks to Paddington, he's just an average Joe now. He'll be no trouble. Let's hope so. Edward. Who said you could talk? Yeah. These guys are bad dudes. Just give me a fucking excuse and I'll really <laughs> Hi, Dad. show you what it means to suffer. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Once our other friend here is dead, Paddington will be the only one left who can manipulate the stone. This is Crowley. A bad guy. And probably the worst villain in video game history. His fuck is useless. <laughs> uh Hi, Dad. Are we going somewhere? <laughs> Alright. So suddenly Mr. Scoff gets quite pushy. Start telling me what to do. I'm pretty much at his mercy. Why are you still here? Let me open it for you. Cold meat. Uh, I am actually blinking manually. It's not quite like SCP where you have to do it really often. Basically, once you get past this section, blinking goes away. It's still a thing that you can do, but, you know, they didn't really plan f for much more than <laughs> just waking up. Alright. We're introduced to our first villain. Cracks in the walls. Mr. Scoff is a little bit scared. Rightly so, because... Unfortunately, Dad's got to go somewhere. He's got to go buy a new jar of jam. <laughs> Dad, no! Come back! <laughs> Alright, so... We play... Walking sim for another couple of hallways. There's a rat here that runs past, that's pretty interesting. Hey, there he is. And now, our first look at our protagonist. Leathery bullsack, Edward Carnby. My god. Who the hell am I? <laughs> I really like the dialogue in this game. Most of the characters are really well written and it's actually quite well acted, considering what this game is. It takes a sec for Edward to get his uh stuff together. Alright. Get in. Get in. It's about time. What if he doesn't show us the path? What if he tries to screw us? That's not an option. He'll do exactly what we want. Are you listening, Paddington? There is ways to torture a man that go far beyond the frail limits of flesh and bone. We went through a lot of trouble to get you and that stone together, Theo. You're the only one who knows how to use its power. Direct it. Guide it. You will be a light bringer. And if you don't, your suffering will be. Legendary. You're insane. You saw what happened in there, it won't work. Yeah, well let's see it. But yeah. Um this is probably not the worst game I've ever played, but it's definitely on the list of like It's those cracks again. Alright. So Crowley's already down one man to Mr. Scott. Now Hammett's 
<laughs> about to uh, <laughs> meet his maker, I guess. So now Crowley stands alone. Poor man. Leave me, Edward. Save yourself. Alright. We interrupt your regularly scheduled cutscene for a bit of fucking elevator simulator. Edward gets a bit weird there and he'll fall down. That's all right. So in a crisis situation, the first thing you want to do is grab the nearest fire, nearest fire hose and just like climb it down the elevator. There's really not much else you can do, you know, like just jump to avoid obstacles. And the first of our awful, awful physics puzzles. I'm glad that a lot of them I've been able to like skip because, geez, are these bad. Anyway, the plan is to just hook the, elect <laughs> the electric cable onto that spike there. Okay. This security guard doesn't actually die to this uh, crack here. He comes back later, which is cool. I like Jack, he's a good boy. And just in a second, we're gonna meet the first of two female characters in the game, Anna. Um, that's her there. She's a bit of a nervous wreck, but uh, she's got the heart of gold. Nothing here, just gonna clip through this table, just to get through it. And then, we're going to be introduced to fire physics. So any of you who are familiar with MVS2 will recognize this. You just spray things. Um, there's also beating mechanics. I can use a fire extinguisher as like a, uh, a club to knock doors in. Uh, they don't open until you ruin the handle. Sometimes they're a bit stubborn, but you know. Doors will be doors. They will stop people from entering places. Awesome slow-mo. And we get our first item. A handgun. And we're also introduced to the fact that these cracks are afraid of fire. Um, if anybody's got any dab emos, there's a spooky little dab that Edward will pull here. There you go. <laughs> I picked up a couple of extra items there as well, along with a medical spray. I picked up some double-sided tape and some batteries. The tape's not used until the museum section, which is like chapter 4, uh, and the batteries aren't used until chapter 7, when my flashlight finally runs out. This poor guy. I feel sorry for him every time I see him, but you know. Okay, all right. Now there's sometimes I'll get little stretchies and they bless the run, the stretches. And we'll see if we're lucky today. Doesn't look like it. Oh no. Oh, the run isn't blessed. This is actually so. The whole game's a, the whole start of the game is a massive cold open. That first chapter is a cold open, and this is a really good title card. <laughs> I really like it. Got a nice vista of Central Park. <sighs> Alone in the dark. The song's really good too. Okay, I'm holding forwards right now because I can manipulate Edward midair, and this next chapter starts in midair. And I can grab this rope before hitting a loading screen, which means that. This NPC doesn't spawn with an AI, so he doesn't get in my way, so I can just crawl past him and rather than have him like destroy this uh, ledge that we're standing on, he just 
lives. Which is nice. It's good that uh, there's one survivor in this hall. Um, this is a skip that I found only on Wednesday night. I can go about halfway on this uh, wall, have half of it start falling down and come back here, drop down, and pull some like matrix style stunts and make it up here. Now I need to hit the checkpoint because the game loads using checkpoints. So just quickly go in there and then I can move up. And here we are. Anna's back. Hi, Anna. Go, Anna. You're tearing the cables off the wall! <laughs> Sorry, HJ Quadruple Zero One. Oh, dude, the composers, he really hit it off the. Like, just smash it out of the ballpark. Now, there is a chance for me to be able to skip a cutscene with Anna, um, but I haven't figured out the mechanics of it yet. It's all tied... Oh, she's in my way. It's all tied in to do with that new skip that I found, and... I don't quite know what's going on. So she might T-pose here, which would be fun. It's always good to see an NPC T-pose. Yeah, there you go. She's, she's just standing there. I hope she's not about to screw me. Yeah, no. She's just standing there like a lemon. So just save and load, just to fix her. I really enjoy this game. I think it's much better than the sum of its parts. Wait, no, the other way around. It's more than the sum of its parts. Alright, another victim to the Great Kraken War. This sound? I'm pretty sure that's the sound of somebody's going in the microphone. I don't think it's a real sound effect. I think it's a placeholder, but you know, who am I gonna ask? Okay. Edward shows off his acrobatic abilities. Now, our two NPCs, two random NPCs, Jack, the security guard, Are you okay? who asks us to light one of these chairs on fire to find our way through this dark room, but, you know, it's actually quite obvious where they are, you can just, you know, run your way through it and it's fine. You seen those fissures? And Anna, she's back. It's Jack. Something's wrong. Oh no! She's ugly now! Edward? Who are you? And what have you done to her? She's one of my hosts now. As you once were. You, my most perfect puppet. And that's <laughs> chapter one. <laughs> the game has a tendency to crash, so I save. What are you talking about? You forgot, hmm. but not to worry. I still, still have the keys, keys to your mind. mind. Now, now give, give me my stone. stone. I don't have your stone. And fuck you anyway. I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to swear. So. Anyway, all right. It's time to make brain soup. We're asked to beat Anna to a pulp and. We have like three weapons, four weapons. There's a soup ladle, a frying pan, a cleaver, and a katana. There's a katana in the other room, like, <laughs> I don't know what a katana is doing in this hotel, but, you know. Anyway. Twelve hits, she's down, uh, and then we can just leave. It, the game does ask you to kill her, but um, you can just, you know, grab the villain. There we go. 
There's Jack. Bye, Jack. And then we are introduced to the other female in the game, Sarah, who is excellently written. I really like every line she says. She's hilarious. She's so strong, I guess. Christ, it's about time. What the hell's going on? Sorry, I I'm Sarah Flores. <laughs> I'm an art dealer. I was here to meet a client for... You're not a cop, are you? Your guess is as good as mine. I don't actually remember anything prior to waking up this evening. Not my name, my address, nothing. Great! My rescuer is more fucked up than I am. <laughs> Hello? Can anyone up there hear me? Police? Stop Anybody? shouting! They're probably, They're probably dead. dead. Or worse. Something else might Something hear. else? You know what? Rats don't give a shit about us. You haven't seen what this son of a bitch does to Okay, that's enough. The, the only, only son, son of a bitch I see here around here is... Shit! <laughs> She's so good. Rescue squad, apparently. Alright, um, I'm not sure what floor we're on, but it's, you know, I, I imagine it's very high. And there he is, Crowley. Gentleman and scholar. Dog owner. Says please. He's great. Alright, gotta take a peek through the cracks. Bedlam. Absolute chaos in there. Oh no! Don't flatter yourself. <laughs> it's such a prick. <laughs> Alright. Now we get our second item. The flashlight. And we also... Shoot this door open. It takes roughly three shots to get it. Uh, depending on where I hit it. And then, uh... We have to watch this shortcut scene. Congratulations, Edward Canby. It's a beautiful baby boy. <laughs> okay, all right. Now I've got to turn around. I can basically ignore this guy. Reload my gun and put it away. And there's another cutscene with another zombie here. Oh, humans. They're called humans with a Z. This is also another, like, four amazing lines of dialogue. I taste your fear. So many questions. Then I suppose you're the answer man, shithead. Who are you anyway? Join me. No more pain. No more pain. No more fear. You only have to die. You're quite a negotiator. <laughs> Why are you one-liner? Alright, so I just walk around these guys. The hallway caves in behind me, so I don't have to worry about them, like, interrupting me. Um, and I can do my day job, which is a firefighter. This door is a loading zone. I just gotta wait for it. And we meet up with Theophile, and that's his real name. I'm so glad you're back, Edward. They attacked us. I managed to lose Crowley, hide here, but he'll come back for the stone. <laughs> My God, I never thought I'd see your face again. Take it easy. You're hurt. You're hurt. He basically says nothing important here. In fact, Theophile basically says nothing important in general. He like makes this whole thing like, oh, there's not time. We have to. I'm sorry. I can't explain everything. Ah, uh, this is the basement floor, Nift. You know Who the hell am I? No time, time to, to explain. Now that he's free, we have no choice but to follow the path of light and stop him before he swallows the entire city. Like, the the. Hey, you can catch up on old times over here. Theophile has this massive plot We're where. Safe here. Let's go. You know, he has to explain something later on, but you know, he never really tells Edward anything. You know, we don't hold it against him. Alright, now Edward's like Captain America. He likes stealing cars. <laughs> a lot of cars. It, it, you know, Amnesiac, doesn't remember his own name, knows how to hotwire a car. Now coming up is our first uh, major skip. And... 
Our only major skip. <laughs> so the idea is you're supposed to drive up the levels in this uh, basement car park um, until you get to the street level. And then you can find out that there's chaos on the streets as well. But, thankfully, I can clip through the ceiling here. I'm just going to briefly save it just in case because it tends to crash. So I can just mash the jump button while jumping on top of the side of this car and Ed Edward will get himself up there. I'll line up because everything's going to go black for a few seconds. So the stream hasn't died. I'm just walking forwards. And then I can jump. And I actually hit the loading zone for the next area. So while I'm paused, the street's loading. And you can see it in the background there. And I saved just in case because, like I said, the game likes to crash. So that was a safety save so that I can just turn the console back on and, you know. It'll load us from the checkpoint. It's a really well-optimized game. Yeah. It's a really well-optimized game. So, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that trick, that skip there, used to be way more inconsistent than that. Um. It used to crash all the time and I'd be resetting runs, but only just not last night but the night before did I figure out how to did I figure out that I could pause there and load the level in. <laughs> I was chuffed with myself. I was like, oh I, I did it within the deadline. Alright, this driving section is notoriously difficult. You fuck up once and you're done. Sorry. You, you screw up once and you're done. Like, the earthquake that's uh, chasing you is relentless. It wants blood. Ah, uh, that's alright. You can all add me on Xbox Live. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, not, they're not too bad if I'm... Um... Uh, you're used to it, but for the first time player, like, this is seriously a hard ask. You know, you haven't had much experience with driving in this game, and suddenly, you know, you're weaving between vehicles. These women are screaming about booties in your ears. Helicopter crashes is pretty cool. So cool. <laughs> I've had a couple of troubles with these poles being completely solid. There you go. <laughs> so. There we go. And thanks to those poles, now I'm slightly slower in this earthquake's catching up, but lucky that you didn't screw up too much. This next one's. These windows also have a chance to be solid. There you go. It's just real good. It's just really good. It's just a really good game. <laughs> Alright, I want to avoid turning in this section as much as possible because the earthquakes will launch the car in the air and I will go off course and click through the ground. This is a fairly long cutscene. Um, it's more of CF file talking, which is just a massive waste of your time. So. But he gives us our call to call to action. Tells us what we need to do, what the plan is. Yeah, 2008. A good year. Hurry, we must go to the museum before he's gathered a larger army. Whose army? Uh, Dead space. What, what are you talking about? Everything okay. Alone in the dark. No, not okay. He's hurt bad and I'm... Losing my I'm mind. losing my mind! And then Theo just loses his, his patience, pulls a gun on him. Take it easy, 
you must proceed down, down the, the path, path of light, light as you've been like you've preparing to do to for your entire, entire life. life. What is the path of light? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Here's the stone you've carried for so long. It's mostly <laughs> now, but it still has power in the right hands. You're our only salvation. I will not, not be your puppet. puppet. You Do will me. Meet, meet me in the museum, museum Edward. Room 943. Wait. No. Great. I don't have to talk to that guy anymore. And that, friends and family, is chapter two. So the start of this next chapter is a bit dry, so Tom, if there's any uh, donations or anything like that, you're more than welcome to go ahead, but if not, I can shoot the breeze for a bit more. Sarah has a bit of a bout fast here. Screw that, I'm leaving. Wait, you're really hurt. You're probably in shock and, and can't feel it. Museum's um, I tend to disagree, S. Mario, man. I don't think this game takes itself seriously at all. Do you hear me? Okay, I basically stand around here. You know, I'm bleeding out. I've got a seven minute countdown timer. Uh, and I just have to stand here. The camera angle change here, and you'll see an ambulance kind of plow through that traffic up there. Okay, one more time. Help me up there. All right. For the second and last time, we hope Sarah are up somewhere. Um, and then we basically stand at Theo's corpse and wait wait for Sarah to stop baying at us. We've got to catch up with it. Damn it! I I think I'm gonna, gonna pass out. <laughs> All right, look, just stay here, okay? I'll take care of it. Hey. Uh, that's exactly why I don't play this on PC Lost Edge, is because I can't get it to run. I don't talk to strangers, apart from you. Right. Dialogue gets crossed over here because I'm too quick picking up this thing. You're still alive. Yeah, right. Those fissures didn't feel like eating a pile of shit like you, huh? Shut up. Paddington was wrong, Paddington was wrong to give you the stone. <laughs> So you saw that, huh? Where are you? Why don't you come up? You forget the thrill of the chase. The fissures seem much too interested in you. Don't worry, I'll come at the right time. But let me tell you that holding onto the stone's only gonna make it worse. How thoughtful. How thoughtful. Alright, and then there's also a mechanic, way, a mechanic where you can make phone calls. Oops. And I always forget the American police number. I'm used to triple zero. We call Dr. Hartford here. Probably the worst doctor in history. Dr. Hartford here. We're relaying the Central Park emergency calls. Hey, I'm in Central Park and I'm badly wounded. Who's no, not? not. <laughs> At least you're still breathing. <laughs> oh my god. The park's public restroom should have first aid kits, so go find one and hold him, Drake. Hold, he's spitting blood everywhere. Hold him, Drake. He's spitting blood everywhere. <laughs> it's so great. All right, I'm actually going to get myself hurt on purpose for a joke. There's a car that explodes here and this door makes a great sound. Excuse me? Excuse me. There you go. That actually makes me bleed out a little bit. It's a little bit slower, but it's a good sound. Uh, exactly zero. In Australia, we're uh, resilient and we solve all our problems using bandit law. Alright, so there's a public restroom here. Uh, door closes behind us. Gets beaten by... We're actually being chased by these bats. Uh, they're called vampires. Uh, that's vampires with a Z. No E. This 
uh, locker is infinitely stocking. I pick up two handkerchiefs, two boxes of bullets, and two um, uh, alcoholic cans. I also pick up some more medical spray and bandages. Now the bandages I just use to patch up this wound and then I abandon them. I don't need them anymore. I, I, I abandon the bandages. Um, get told about how to use in inventory, which is probably the worst inventory I've ever used. Uh, that's probably a lie. Anyway, I triggered a more tutorials. Just got to wait for them to go. And then one more tutorial, except this one's useful. This is the favorites menu. So I can set certain item combinations to a... Uh, like a quick menu. So that I can access them quite quickly. And it's actually probably the most lucid thought that anybody who is making this game had. It's just... The favorites menu is... Just honestly genius. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Edwards gets a bit weird after cutscenes. Okay, shoot ourselves down. Another cop. Right. Now, I did a skip earlier during the parking sequence, which actually skipped a key item, the uh, lighter. <clears throat> now, another lucid thought that the developers had was the game actually checks your inventory when you respawn, and it will add items to your inventory that you need. And that's why I need to abandon the bandages, because I've got an empty slot, and it's just waiting to be filled with my, uh, my fire lighter. Now, part of the reason why I'm explaining this to you now is that I need to kill myself. And the easiest way to do that is to actually hit a checkpoint and then die straight afterwards. So I'm actually going to tilt this bus. I'm going to use that uh, cop to cause this bus to rotate forwards. And it'll rotate indefinitely, it'll just keep spinning around on its axis, because it's like a big seesaw. And it'll only fall down when it was inside. But I can get on top of it, and use it to elevate on my enemies. So I just need to wait so I, till I see text on the license plate, so I can stand on the top of the bus. There we go. Turn around, and I'm looking at that ledge there. I'm thinking, I want to be up there. That's where I want to be. Edward Carnby is a hankering to be up there. I just gotta wait till I can get closer and then. There we go. So the third person camera here is a bit uh, messed up. It's intent on looking at the, um, the bus, so I have to stay in first person here. That's fine. Anyway, I backtrack a little bit so I can hit this checkpoint and then I just jump into the void. I grab a spare um, medical spray because they're always good to have. And we continue on our merry way. Boss is back. There he is. This is what he's supposed to do, right? Like, there you go. This is much more dignified than spinning. <laughs> the wheels on the bus will go round and round. More so in New York City than anywhere else. I can't say anything about the original Alone in the Darks because I haven't played them. Uh, I don't think I want to. I think I've experienced Alone in the Dark and probably... Where are you going, Edward? I've experienced Alone in the Dark in the best way you possibly can in the form of Alone in the Dark 2008. More falling vehicles? Edward's lucky this car's here, to be honest. Whoa, 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 where are you going, son? That's not normal. <laughs> okay. I climb through this car. Climb this rope. It's all very riveting. I'm gonna jump in here. Alright, this flesh bag. I'm not sure what they are. The game doesn't explain them. Come on, Edward. Uh, but I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, it can burn in hell. Alright. 
Now, <laughs> we start getting courtesy calls from Crowley. Uh, he's actually a really nice guy. He, you know, really helps an amnesiac out. I'll make you a deal. Like the one you dealt with, Theo? I'll, I'll pass. Thanks. How's the memory? Mr. Carnby. Still lost in Wonderland. There's only one situation in this game where you're truly alone in the dark, and it happens. Chapter 8. Sorry, cockatoos. The invocation might have some unexpected side effects. You've done some amazingly depraved things in your life, Edward. Really, you should be thanking us. In your shoes, I prefer to forget too. Of course, Ugly birds. To Ugly birds. <laughs> Tell me. Crowley. Fuck. All right. Alright, the kind of puzzle in this area are these boxes. I have to hotwire them when the light's green. Uh, otherwise I get electrocuted. Actually, let me just make sure, just in case. And I do have the lighter. Okay, there's some rats, and that's rats with a Z here that spawn. I just blow them up. There's an explosive canister there that I can shoot. There's another rat that spawned here. Sorry, rats. It's like sheep. Rats is both singular and plural. Okay. Now, I used to hate this section. There's like a little puzzle where you have to get that wire out of the water to stop the water being electrocuted, and then you have to watch a cutscene of a uh, worker get swallowed by some water. Blanko, you'll see it in a second, but I found a way to damage boost. It's really good. So, fire walk with me. Pockets with a Z. <laughs> Everything's with a Z. So I just throw this chair down here. Um, I need it to be facing the right direction for me to be able to stand on it. I'm gonna jump up here. And... I've just got to get it so that Edward flies through that door. Which isn't too bad. When he cooperates. Oh, well, that could work. No, it's not close enough. There we go, that's a good one. No, uh, excuse me? <laughs> At this rate, Edward's going to lose more than his memory. Come on, son. On the list of glitches that are, you know, on the list of tricks in this game that are uh, easy to do, this is all them, so I'm, this is all me, to be honest. God, Edward. There we go. All right. Okay. And we turn off that fire. We need to come back into that room in a second. 
Anyway, that skips two cutscenes, one of a man being swallowed by uh, black goo, the other of this nest, which actually spawns rats. This zone's actually kind of a tutorial for two kinds of enemies, and I just, you know, conveniently skip them both. Um, so yeah, we de-electrify this water, unelectrocute. That's a, uh, um, a scientific term. We come back here, and we grab the same chair that we were using. Like, this chair's MVP, it's so useful. More useful than the Theophile. Now this black goo, you can hear it screaming at me. It's afraid of the light. So I use this chair as a lantern to guide my way. This ladder. Um, I, I don't think it actually has a name. It can be a nest if you wanted to. Hey! It could be Mrs. Nesbitt if you wanted hey, to. Man. You happen to see my partners? We were attacked. Hey! That man asked if we've seen his partners. We don't actually see them anymore. Thanks for the uh, chair skip. Those things stink big time, huh? Okay. Water. Gotta find my partners. The park is right up there. Good luck. All right. And then this is our first taste of uh, Central Park which is a kind of open world section. Half of it's, well, vast majority of it's blocked off from us right now. Um, so we can't do much except uh, drive a little go-kart, which is the worst physics. It's the most top-heavy vehicle. Oh, I'm really sore. I'm gonna have to take a sec to heal up at some point here. Uh, vampires. Yushin Yushinra? Zushinra? Oh shit. There you go, that's the other. I have to blink to clear that poison from my vision. Um, I don't care though. I've got places to be. This thing has a tendency to hit trees. <laughs> Basically, if I'm accelerating in it, it's impossible for me to turn. Because it's like you know, hit a bump and is in mid-air. Got to be careful of curbs as well, they will cause vehicles to crash, so got to drive slowly over them. Like I was saying, this car drives like garbage. So we're actually going off the beaten track here, you know, bushranger style. Uh, to this building? I think it's like a school or an orphanage? At least that's what I like to think. To pick up three tendrils. So this is a... Uh, uh, Edward Carnby is a hentai hunter on the side. So we've got to destroy these tendrils for the late game to, to uh, get access to chapter 8. You can hear it. Um, I also want to pick up this. At this point... We are introduced to the uh, second weapon in the game, the old lighter and aerosol. This is a bogan strats. So I run in here, pick up the gun, missed it. Okay. Hot wire and elevator. So you couldn't really see it because it's dark in there. <clears throat> so you'll see it again. Also the aerosol acts a bit weird because we're in an elevator. Okay. The cracks are back, but... One spray from a trusty aerosol can and it's gone. So they're the, they're the tendrils. So they give me a stat called Spectral Vision. And with Spectral Vision, uh, 30 points and I can see these glyphs. It says seven of them hidden uh, throughout the map. And at 70 points, I lower a barrier. Uh, Satan's barrier, I guess, for want of a better term. It's awesome slow motion. 
Um, because my golf buggy despawned because I went inside, I have to go pick up a new one, which is fine. You know, acquire vehicles. This humans with a Z will chase me down. But he's fine. He's lazy. Oops, there you go. Penchant for slamming into trunks. Oh my god, Edward, get control of your vehicle. Good job, Mr. Carnby. Combat roll. <laughs> you idiot. You imbecile. <laughs> you bloody drongo. <laughs> get the get the old flamethrower back out because we've got more boys to burn I actually think one of the most interesting parts of this game is the fact that uh, your the health kits also function as um, oh, sorry I've got it Wait, who are you? You're not supposed to be here. Your health picks your health packs also function as weapons. You can use them with a lighter as they are. Um as a flamethrower as well. This poor guy is just living his life. Edward doesn't even care. Uh, no, you are supposed to jump down from there. Yeah, actually, there's a, um, a rope that you're supposed to use to climb down. Uh, I don't know. It's, there's slow-mo there for no reason. There's no explosions. Okay. Probably the worst jump in the game. Courtesy of Eden Games. Thank you, everyone for giving me the ability to die. <laughs> okay, well, get to listen to this guy then. because I can actually... Oh, these cars all have strict layouts. Uh, so the inventory in them is always the same. So I just grab a spare health kit while I'm there. That's still not going to make it. Are you kidding me? Oh, that might make it. That might make it. Come on! Oh my god. <laughs> um, I could not tell you, to be honest, uh, Terminal. I have no idea what the other games are like. I know that the PS3 version is this version, but uh, better in some way. Um, I know that the PS2 version is different from the PS3, the PC, and the Xbox 360 version, and I don't know how much more different that is from... Oh, trust me, the SMR, SMR won't be there. I'm the only person running this game, and I am an average runner. <laughs> Come on, Edward. Theophile depends on you. Hmm. 
Well, I've never had that. Just don't even bother with the PC version. Miss me. Miss me. Find us. Full name, please. Edward Carnby. Memory coming back. First try. Yeah. Something like that. Okay, have a seat and let me take a look while it searches. Okay, so this is the point where you realize that this game is not actually a reboot, but a sequel. Christ. You can thank the lady. It was high time to fix this. Bad news is we ran out of painkillers an hour ago. Grit your teeth. Your friend told me about your amnesia. <laughs> it's not a spooky game snack. Do that. Hardly surprising. I don't think you'll be the only one trying to forget tonight. I mean, the ground opens up and cuts us off from the rest of the city. Jesus. Jesus. And there you go. Not my best work, but it'll last the night. All right. Here we go. So we've looked up Edward's files oh in the database. Pulled the wrong file. Let me see. Edward Carnby. Professor Carnby. Edward Carnby, researcher. Paranormal investigator, huh? It's not the case of Jeremy Harwood's suicide at Tercito's Manor in 1924. That's the plot of the very first Alone in the Dark Games. What the fuck? What the mind? Fuck? Here, notable scars and marks. Large, large scar, scar on, on the left, left side, side of the face. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're like a hundred years old. So this is the same Edward Carnby as the Edward Carnby in Alone in the Dark, the very first game. It has no bearing on the plot. Okay. This next section sucks balls. It's so bad. It's a mistake. Waking up tonight was a fucking mistake. I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. Well, for what it's worth, I'll send the files to... <laughs> perfectly <yourself>. reasonable explanation. <laughs> Whatever. Doc, we got another call. Doc, we got another call. Doc, we gotta go. You two coming? She is. I'm going to the museum. The hell I am. You think I'll be safe here? <laughs> fuck around. Don't fuck around. I'll shoot you myself. <laughs> You're a real sweetheart. <laughs> such Thanks, a charmer. Stay safe. Okay, all right. Another driving section. Uh, this one, I would say, is worse than the uh, earthquake section in the taxi uh, after parking skip. For one specific reason. And that reason is... Uh, about to become apparent. I said that sentence way too early. Here we go. For one specific reason. Vampires. They cometh. Nosferatu. So these little pricks will attach themselves to my car, and every now and then they'll scream and lift me into the air, and I have no control. I can, I have no bearing on my vehicle when I'm in the air. And it is just a nightmare to try and control it. I cut through this uh, field rather than actually going around the road. They'll fall off if you're going fast enough or if you hit an object, so that's all good. Whoops! Car <laughs> fell to pieces. Luna, in every bad video game, there is a shining ray of hope. And it so happens in Alone in the Dark, it's the goddamn soundtrack. And Sarah. <laughs> the soundtrack and Sarah. Alright, a tree falls across our path here. Rapid unplanned disassembly. <laughs> oh, the vampires are back. Oh, get them off. Also, the hood of our car came back. Well, not the hood, but, you know, well, the hood. The top. You can see the car despawn here. 
Boop. <laughs> and we have our first boss fight. Most of the boss fights can be reduced down to uh, throwing explosive bottles at a thing. So it's a vampire nest. I'm just going to take a brief moment. Alright, I'm a healthy boy. Reload my gun. Here we go. So what the vampire nest does is it'll pick up physics objects and throw them at me. This includes bodies, cars, parts of that bridge that it's on, lampposts, you know, whatever it feels like. So wait a sec here. So yeah, the objective is just to exploit the base of it. It's riveting stuff, trust me. I believe I have two bottles in my inventory. One. Here comes a car, I'm pretty sure. Oh no. Here's the car. There he goes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Man, how unlucky do you gotta be? <laughs> Alright. There's something primal. Nice work. How'd you do this? Not sure. It's like some sort of buried instinct. It's primal. Something connected to your amnesia? It's not just that. Maybe Crowley's right. There's something inside me. Something dark and violent. I know I've done fucked up things in the past. I can feel it. <laughs> it took that guy like a chance. The stone. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing the wrong thing here. All I've got to go on is Paddington's word. And I don't even remember who the hell he is. Screw Crowley. And maybe you can't trust Paddington. Or even yourself. But you can trust me, and for what it's worth, I think you're doing the right thing. This path of light, or whatever, we need to try and solve this mess. Let's hope you're right. Let's hope you're right. Uh, again, I'm going to take a moment to just, you know, look at my wounds. And then we're going to forge on towards the museum. Room 943 awaits us. It's going to backstab me so hard. Nah, Sarah's hey, bay. You're in great shape for an old man. Forgive, Forgive me for, for not laughing. My dentures would fall out. <laughs> up. At least we can trust each other. I don't even know who I am, Sarah. Shit, I don't, I don't even know, know who I, I am. Okay, okay. I know this is hard on you, but god damn it. Do you think all this is easy for me? For me? We both feel alone, alone right, right now. now, believe me. Well, drop it. Alright. Crowley continuing to send me messages. He's like a pushy lover. I wonder, did you ever take Latin? I remember this much. Light is Lucis, and to bring is Pharaoh. So light bringer is actually Lucifer. <gasps> oh no! That's what he said, isn't it? The light bringer and a prophecy about the stone. I hope the prophecy starts telling us what the hell we're supposed to do about it then. Okay, all right. Best vehicles in the game, mutes. They're so easy to handle, and I can't believe they only spawn during this section of the game. Oh, and a really good chase sequence right at the end. Uh, I, honestly, a really good chase sequence right at the end. Okay, so... I just need to make my way downtown. Well, it's not really downtown. I don't know how New York works, but, you know, Central Park. Isn't everywhere in New York downtown? Tell me I'm wrong. Oh, thank you. All right. So coming up here is probably the most ridiculous. I hit that tray on purpose to stop the car.
So we've got this massive gap and a pickup truck. Not a pickup truck, sorry. Uh, a, uh, a tow truck. A pickup truck is what I would call a ute. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big crack. <laughs> Alright, so the plan, the plan is... This is a real burnout type nonsense here. Looks good. Now we just have to worry about the landing. Okay. Typical Edward fashion. Shoot the locks off the doors. And then the vampires are back. My god, they won't leave me alone. Uh, at this point, they actually do me a favor. Uh, they spirit Sarah away. They kidnap her. So I don't have to listen to her anymore. <laughs> I love you too, Latvian Billy. <laughs> she's screaming, she's banging. There's a bat stuck inside my car. Uh, Edward doesn't care. He's a hardened... 100... You know, a hardened octogen... What? A centigenarian? I don't know what the term would be. Anyway, we leave without it. She's gone. More locks on doors. Uh, we're also tasked to face down more cracks. <laughs> Fox, get this guy off me! <laughs> That's right. I actually really like these cracks. They're not nice simple pass to get rid of. Just a little bit of fire and then we'll get rid of them. Okay, we need to get the gun back out, to shoot the panel off this. And then we can hotwire another elevator. Now the museum's probably the favorite part of my uh, the museum is probably my favorite part of this game. Um, it's not like it's particularly broken, but it's, honestly, it's got some of the best characters, some of the most, it, it really is a section that makes you go, hmm. Come on. for this window to actually load so I can shoot it. The wire parts are not random, no. <clears throat> There's actually very little in this game that's randomised. Right. Grab some explosive bottles, grab this fire extinguisher because I'll need it later. But I'll just put it here for now. Stand here for a moment. Because <clears throat> we've got uh, more cracks to deal with, but... Uh, you know, Edward knows what's coming. This door's a bit of a pain in the ass. There we go. Come on. Come on, Edward. It's just a door. It's just a book. Okay. Edward. Sarah, what's happening? Are you okay? Uh, hurry. I'm coming. Hold on. All right. Now, at this point... I need to do some inventory management. Put some fire on my bullets. This is a mechanic that you guys haven't seen yet, but a, a large part of this game is actually shooting enemies with fire bullets. Uh, you prepare fire bullets by um, pouring alcohol on your gun. Actually, I don't need that. I need the fire extinguisher. Um, the crafting system in this game actually is really tight. It's not uh, well conceived, but it's really tight. So these are big boys. You know, there's boys, there's boys, and then there's big boys. Big boys suck. Anyway, uh, once an enemy gets knocked to the ground, if you shoot them with any form of fire, they'll just die instantly, so that's good. The, the idea is you're supposed to... Where is that bottle? I think I might need to go grab a spare one. 
Actually, did the... Yeah, this will work. Yeah, we've got to go ad hoc because I got hit while throwing that bottle before, so let's just... Come a little closer. There you go. Sit down. Sit down? I'll grab this spare fire extinguisher. Yeah. Yeah, the big boys. Um, enemies have cracks in them, and the idea is you have to uh, hit each crack with some form of fire. So whether it's like a flamethrower spray or a flaming bullet, it doesn't matter. Oh, this door's stubborn. Uh, big boys have three, boys have two, and then boys just have one. And then there's also lasses, they also only have one. Anyway, Sarah, we found her. She's not doing great. There's actually a cutscene that I can skip here. It's the only cutscene that I can skip in the game. Uh, let's just save. So I can just match A. The cutscene gets skipped. I grab this axe. Watch out for the T-pose. The T-pose is really good. All right. And probably the best representation of CPR. Hold right trigger. Breathe life back into those lungs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great stuff. Now this is probably the best cutscene. Oh my god, every line of dialogue is amazing. Edward, breathe. Just breathe. Do it, Sarah. It's not worth it. He's a leathery ball sack. No! <laughs> Yucky! <laughs> Why would you do that? He's so ugly. <laughs> He's such a jerk, too. God, you could do so much better. I gotta grab some alky pop from the fridge. Off I won't be long. So two bottles of alcohol. I've been collecting some items for a puzzle, so I need these I know. handkerchiefs I'll and this double-sided okay. tape. Okay. Hurry. I need to grab my magnum and I need to reload it. Uh, now there's a couple of nests in here, they're l largely unimportant. Um, I just need to shoot this lamp. Shoot that, shoot that, shoot that, nah, okay. Okay, alright, we're up on the next level. Uh, the idea is you're supposed to shoot these planks and they're supposed to burn and, you know, you're supposed to go through that. It takes so long, I have to wait for such a long time, I'd rather just not, so I just jump over the banister and go on my merry way. More of these flashbacks. Uh, these ones I can just shoot with a gun. Out the way. Now this section has some of the worst puzzles. So I need to grab one of these Molotov cocktails that I prepared earlier. Run past these rats. Now the idea is <clears throat> There's a room here that's full of nests with a Z. And there's two lasers, and those two lasers are holding down a security gate, so I need to destroy those nests somehow. And the solution is to throw a Molotov cocktail over that wall so that it'll burn all the nests. Which is great. It's great in theory. The only issue is, is that it's uh, quite easy to miss, <laughs> for want of a better term. Especially when these rats really just don't want to leave you alone. No, that's not going to work. So 
so... Leave the cop alone, Edward. That's fine. There's more bottles of Alki Pop. I can make more Molotovs. It's no problem. Um, it's not bad, Tigsa. Come on, man. It's just different. Oh, there's a problem this too. There you go. All right. So that'll explode in a couple of seconds. Uh, meanwhile, these rats are still hanging out. <clears throat> and they're, they're a hassle. They're a pain in the ass. So once I get in here, I can actually save. And reload. And that door that's behind me will uh, close and the rats won't bother me anymore. So it's always nice when I don't have to worry about dirty rats. <laughs> Another puzzle. This one's actually pretty good. So I've got a Molotov cocktail with some double-sided tape around it. And the idea is to... Oh, sorry, I've got a hair in my mouth. Uh, throw the Molotov cocktail onto this rat and it'll return to the nest, and it'll explode, and I'll go on my merry way. I have to wait for it to do one cycle, because I can't throw that bottle in time. He comes back. Little buddy, will you be my ugly little petard? Will you hoist that nest over there for me? What a champ. Okay, um, this area, uh, before I go in there, I need to take stock of what I've got, which is not much. Two bottles of Alky Pop here that I can grab. I'll use those to uh, Enchant my bullets with fire damage, I guess. Shoot that woman in the back. So yeah, enemies have hit uh, certain spots where you have to shoot them, and they're on the crack. You've got to pound them in the crack. This guy's going freaky on me. Oh, and I'm out of ammo. Alright, that's those. There's three more boys. Uh, you know, boys. The boys are the little one. Boys are the big ones. These guys. You can hear a security guard prattling away. Um, we're gonna go have a chat with him in a sec. Hey, man. Alright. This place is dangerous. You shouldn't be here. Everywhere is dangerous tonight. Open the gate. I have to wait for this guy to shut up. He he does not just escape. He just stands there and he talks and talks. I want him to leave. Go away. Yes, open the gate, please. Come on. Favorite character in the game. Uh, oh fuck! I've just forgotten his name. Um, it starts with an M. His name is. Oh, what's his name? No, it's something Brown. It's like Mitchell Brown or Michael Brown or. Oh no! I feel awful. It's not Magnum Brown. Yeah, a few draw frames, that's alright. Oh, can't remember his name. Anyway, this guy has loads of character. He's clued up on the plot. He helps Edward on his way. He's great. Here he is. Get over here. I'm shutting up. What are you doing walking around here like some lost fool? 
You want to go and get yourself killed? Is that the game plan? Everybody died so fast. Bam! Just like that. <laughs> you best find yourself some place to hide. I have no time for that. I'm looking for something. Like what? Room 943. Room 943? Why the hell are you looking for that? Nobody ever goes down that shithole. <laughs> Someone told me to go there. Who? Mr. Paddington? Yeah, yes. he knows Mr. Paddington. He's so know? good. He's practically the only one that ever visits it. You know him? Of course I do. Great Worked man. 15 years for him. Could have had such a bigger career if he hadn't chosen to stay head curator of this dusty old museum. So well acted. Anyways, what is in that room? Not a clue. You should have asked Mr. Paddington. It's almost Slash like his hands. He's so cool. He's <laughs> so good. Down there no, it's not scary at all. Christ, come on. Okay, remember this room. Tell me, you know, large iron gate, huge you chamber. Can't. There's a it's statue on the other side. Public. It's... Listen, I'm not the public. I'm not the public. Not. Thing is, you can't access it from where you are. This is the only door that leads You there. know, terminal over there. So you're going to have to come on my side of the gate first. Go down one level and through an underground tunnel. Mr. Brown here faster. lets us Everything through this gate. Everything is digitally controlled around here. So you better hope that I'm still around when you come this way. Good luck to you. Okay. All right. So, see? Large room. Right, we go through here. There's an elevator here. It's all very mundane. You know, take the elevator down. We'll come back up the other side and we'll meet him there. So, we take the elevator down. And it goes down approximately uh, half a floor, I'd reckon. You can see it. You know, freaks out. You know, that's the same doorway that I always just came through. You know, I've... You know, this is very familiar. I've just been here, haven't I? What's going... What's going on? You know, my favourite character has been... <laughs> Mr. Brown. He's been pinned to the wall, you can see him over there, just hanging. That's him, that's the guy, that's my favourite character, and he just dies. <laughs> it happens so quickly, it's like, bam. It matters not that you are unable to remember the corners for you. There will be no mercy. I'm not asking for mercy. So you assume responsibility for the blood you shed. Well, that's my problem. Now let's see how you beg for mercy. This guy is like I've got to shoot the crabs off of his body, then he'll freak out and cause like a mount. I'm not a maelstrom. Um, a tempest, I guess. So he's got three cracks on his body as well. Um, and the idea is that I need to apply fire to these cracks. I need to drop the ball. What do we do? Using my trusty explosive canisters. Whoa, Alky Pop. <laughs> the biggest of boys. <laughs> Alright, again, gotta wait for the rubble, otherwise it will ruin me. Oh That's just unfortunate. Alright, I need to grab some spare bottles. I'm getting a bit low on health, yes. I'm gonna need to heal after this fight, too. What happened there was the uh, his animation caused him to hit that bottle of alcohol before I could shoot it. So. It shattered. There you go. And goodbye. You ugly prick. Son of a bitch. Edward, it wasn't safe there. Ah, oh, oh, fuck! <laughs> Why is that? It's just so good. Uh, dead issue. Sorry you missed the fun. I'm really glad you're here. The thing with the gameplay mechanics in this game is that really it's so many separate pieces I'm that fit together to kind of like, I've had enough mysteries. you know, the foundation is falling as the game is being built on top of it. It's crazy. It's crazy that they managed to like finish this. Anyway, uh, Mr. Brown, he's fallen from the, he's fallen from his lofty perch. 
Uh, this is my favorite sequence. So there's that ID scanner, and you know, only the security guards are supposed to have access to it. And rather than grab the body and just lift it over there, Edward decides, no, I need to get a sword and I need to lop off his arm. So, uh, hi chat. I hope you're enjoying uh, ESA hosting us for Hackathon. Thanks for meeting our donation goals and getting our friends to ESA this year. And then we use him like that. Okay, what was his, what's his name? Matthew Brown, that's his name. Okay, at this point, this is kind of like a PNR, a point of no return. I need to stock up on a, a few items to make sure that I don't have a rough time later on. So I'm gonna grab a health can to make sure I'm healed. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm gonna grab this bottle of alcohol. I'm just gonna take a moment while it's quiet. Just spray myself all over. Edward probably smells like Benadine. Okay. Shit the rope. Lift the lid. Jump down this, jump down said rope. And shoot the lock off this door and then jump off. Okay, uh, again, more, a bit more inventory management. Reload my gun, use some of this alcohol. Sarah Polly's down. She doesn't even use a rope, she just fucking jumps down. Absolutely champ. There's two boys. Oh, sorry, not boys. Boys. There's two boys that spawn here. Okay. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's not good. Oh. So that basically gives me a deadline. So I have a seven minute Jokes. deadline Just open it, will you? to find some bandages. <laughs> Alcohol is definitely the best enchantment ever. It's a really good potion. A lonely place. Feels oh, like right. Theo. So this is room 943. This is where our Theophile was Take asking us to There's get writing. to. Theo, my pupil. And I, 1936. We find out that Theo's actually you Edward's uh, adopted Barely. child. But Theo's dead and it leads me nowhere. Hey, what the hell? Don't. And spooky things start happening. One thing I have to do here before anything else, and that's open this cupboard. That's it. Now, I don't need to uh, at this point, but I'm going to anyway, and I'm going to show you the spooky ghost that's haunting us right now. Uh, once Sarah decides that she's standing in a sufficient position. A sufficient position, not a position. Okay. <laughs> it's Theo! Hey man, what's going on? <laughs> you, you look like shit. <laughs> anyway, he's going to teleport around the room and point at various objects here that I need to. Here it's written, Sarah. Uh, look at. So a newspaper clipping that says Sarah, a record that says I want you to. Um, a door handle that says knock on it. I want you to. I don't know why that's down here. The Theo is a very random collection of things. And then a perfume called Him. Him. And then cutscene. 
this box falls over and it says down, but it's pointing up. So I think Theophile's message is, I want you to knock down. him up. But Sarah, I want you to... Sarah, to... I want you to knock him down. Thanks, <laughs> Theo. Sounds like you're going to have to kick my ass. Sounds like you're going to have to kick my but, ass. But I don't want to hurt you. I, I could... I know it sounds absurd, but hey. You dreamed of it. it. Okay, let's do it, Sarah. Not an option. We actually have a donation. Online. Yeah, right. no, go ahead. So Before, I, I wanted to tell you that... You don't hate me that much? That's it? Okay. Give me that thing here. I'll stay next to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Neve. We have no time. Honestly, it's it's the game and not me. Because this war is raging on every plane of existence. The stone you're carrying offered men fortune. <laughs> Theo back from the dead. It's like Dumbledore at the end of Harry Potter. Uh, he says a lot of things that are ultimately meaningless. Like like I said, you don't have to care anything about what Theo has to say. He designed an artifact that would carry his soul through time. Waiting for the right moment to take his revenge. Lucifer was trapped in his own creation, but I have released him. Now he's searching for the stone because it can recast his fate. Good morning, as well everyone. As ours. Like people, central. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> <spiritual exhum. laughs> Some are lethal, but one of them can save us. Now wake up and close your eyes. Edward, did something happen? You said something about eyes. Close my eyes. Theo told so me what? that. Alright, so I close my eyes. <laughs> this bug eyed little creep. This is actually pretty cool. So, this wall here is a hidden panel, and behind it lies the iron helix. That's incredible. And this will come, this, will, this area will become important later in the game. It's a really cool room. I, I, it's it can, the first time you come in here. You're like, the, what is this? What am I looking at? Like, what is that? <laughs> but it becomes obvious later on. Thea was kind enough to leave us an SD card that fits our phone, which I mean is reasonable. This is 2008. Okay, let's see this. Oops, that was too early. Okay, I need to drop. I need to. I need to. I need to. Oh my god. I need to get these batteries, put them in my flashlight, and then drop this box. Because I don't need them. And I need to get this. I also need to. Uh... Okay, alright. So this little lens has a specific shape uh, imprinted on it, and it's used for activating some uh, panels using the flashlight. It's finicky and it doesn't always work. There we go. Oh, I understand. Here's my part in all this. I have to build the lock to that door. Nah, but it's not a drill. You would think it's a drill because it looks like a drill, but it's not. I'm heading to the old castle. Build this lock and yes, again. See the end of this soon. Trust me, and take care. Okay. Uh. Yeah, that's good enough. Seven, seven bullets. Six shots. Okay. I shoot these two nests to stop the rats from like bothering me. And this is probably the silliest section. It's like a little Shenmue simulator. A forklift thing. <laughs> I actually have to lift it because if I have the forks down while I go down this ramp, I will get caught in the bottom. Compact flashcard? No, compact flashcards are massive. I would accept. It, it definitely is bigger than an SD card, but. It's so silly. Look at him driving around. It's so dumb. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you have no any. You have no idea how many times I've played this game recently, and it still makes me laugh. <laughs> I 
Okay, the actual puzzle here is I'm supposed to lift this <laughs> this random ass piece of rubble. Uh, I've got five bullets. Bring out this pipe. This guy spawns here. He's a real pain in my neck. Sit down, you poor fool. And get back in the forklift, Edward. Because <laughs> we're not done with you yet. This forklift, like the chair earlier, is just probably the most well used piece of puzzle equipment in video game history. Okay, uh, again, shit some nests so they don't cause me issues. Grab some uh, supplies. <laughs> Get back in those forklift. These two boxes are important. Because I need to get up there. <laughs> I use it as like a makeshift ladder. <laughs> And that lifts this little platform so that I can use the forklift again. <laughs> it's still going! That forklift is just still useful! <laughs> okay, there's some rats here. They don't really cause an issue. So I'm gonna park my forklift and <laughs> pilot the forklift Shinji. <laughs> Do it or Sarah has to. Back in the forklift. It's like hover boots in Ocarina of Time. You just have to keep going back in the menu to put them on and off. It just, it's crazy. Is <laughs> the entire remaining hour to pick up all the forklifts? I wish. I wish. Oh my god. I would do anything to watch Edward sit in a forklift and awkwardly drive around Central Park, but no. <laughs> this next section's a personal favourite. I love it. It's so unplay-tested. So we fall in this pit. We're surrounded by the black goo that's afraid of the light, and we get a courtesy Just call from Crowley. So here comes Crowley in a, in a helicopter with a spotlight. You have ten seconds. You have ten seconds. Fuck off. Here, Let me give you something, something to think about. about. So the idea here uh, is that I'm supposed to just walk in this circle of light and make sure that I don't die. It's, it's very simple. Um, but there's this pipe here that I can just jump on and I can't die. So I can just stand here and I can just get to hang out with chat and... Say what's up. I'm talking about compact flashcards, are we? That's nice. That's very quaint. <laughs> Some more great dialogue from Crowley in a second here. <laughs> are we having we have a nice walk, walk in the, in the park? park? And so obedient, so too. Dog, dog could take, take lessons, lessons from you. He has a dog. <laughs> Crowley has a dog. <laughs> Already. Hey, Zook. I grow tired of playing games with you, boy. I grow tired of chasing you, Carnby. Oh. You should have been dead long, long ago. ago. Sorry, punctuality is one of my strengths. Give it to me. Please. please. And he says, That's please. He's such a gentleman. He's such a corrupted gentleman. Play games with me, boy. If the stone is cursed, why do you want it? What about the path of light? The stone deserves better, better than, than that stick with prophecy. Blah, 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 blah. for fools. To hell with mankind. I was born to carry that <laughs> stone. The rest is no concern of yours. <laughs> of yours. He doesn't say anything. <laughs> this awesome monster design. Look how cool it is.
Also, this helicopter pilot, he's a fucking champ. Like, he does really well considering the circumstances. And Edward hanging from the rope. Oh my god, this game is just perfect. Look at him swinging around. Way. Alright. Alright, this next section is also bad. I don't know, whoever whoever decided this that this needed to be in the game needs to be fired. I don't even care if eating games is defunct now. The, this guy needs to be fired. I, I hold forwards and I press jump. Excuse me? Do you want to run that by me again? Why did I die? I think... Oh, you know what that was? I was bleeding out when I started... Uh, when I went into room 943. I think my seven minutes were up, so I died. <laughs> Edward passed out. Now, there's an important thing to remember, and that is that I am bad at this game. No, uh, the important thing to remember is that uh, that helicopter pilot is still in the cockpit, and he's still alive. He's just a little bit disoriented right now. And you can hear him in a second here. Once these helicopter blades hit the cliff, by, cliff face. Come on. So he wakes up. You can see it briefly, him waking up, and he'll yell at Edward to not jump off the rope. Hold on, you fucker! Hold the fuck on! No! Rest in peace, helicopter dude! We hardly knew you. More rope climbing. Except this time, uh, some poisonous rats will come down the... Oh, I need to reload. This isn't good. Okay, we're safe. Some poisonous rats will climb down and they will shoot me in. It's annoying. It's nothing particularly lethal. It's just a hassle. Okay. When this last set spawns, the train card will die and they'll die. Good. I don't have to use any more bullets on them. Edward will wig out because he thinks he's standing on flat ground, but he's not. <laughs> Snake eater. Okay, alright. At this point, I'm gonna take stock of what I've got. Uh, okay, I'm gonna need to make a bathroom break. Uh, not in real life, sorry. Uh, Edward's gonna need to make a bathroom break to pick up some items. So a boy will spawn here, and then some boys and another boy will spawn back there. So I take out these guys from a distance, it's easy. Pour another bottle of whiskey on my gun. actually going pretty well. This fight has a tendency to like go a bit weird. Uh, okay, you can see there's a big boy back there. So at this point I'm just gonna run past this lass. Go in here. Pick a couple of spare items up. Get the old flamethrower out. 
Burn. Burn. Okay, who's left? Oh, there's a couple of you. Come on, come on, dude. Okay. Get your old explosive barrel out. Explosive barrel, sorry. Explosive bottle. And then we deal with this guy the same way we've been dealing with him all the time. Just blow them up and then execute them. Or not. That's fine. Is this game based on draw events? Yes. Back in the year of 2008, New York City burned to the ground. This woman jumps out of this train cart for no reason. She just does not want to be amongst us anymore. She's just like, whoa! See you, lass. <laughs> All right, so you remember that big flying beast that took out the, um... I'm a very good boy. Uh, that took out the helicopter before? Well, it's back. It's baying for blood. Now this is probably, I don't know about you guys, but Halo 3 definitely ripped off Alone in the Dark. Um, uh, on the, you know, crawling through the flood, not an original idea, come on, how charity like, get out of here. Edward Carnby did it first. <laughs> it's so gross and so unnecessary. This has no bearing on plot. You just get to walk through the innards of a hell beast. And it is at this point... Where... Wait. Did Halo 3 come first or not? I might have said something wrong there. Don't mind me. Uh, anyway, it's at this point where the game actually takes kind of a turn? And it opens up into an open world game. So now I get to drive around the entirety of Central Park, uh, collecting tendrils, hunting tentacles, and, you know, taking down the bad hentai monsters. So I'm just going to take a stop by the ambulance, I'm going to pick up some, uh, I don't need a plug back, uh, some medical sprays, I'm actually going to take some, oh, no, this isn't a taxi, is it? Oh, sometimes that's a taxi and it's got medical spray, uh, the mosquito repellent's fine. Okay, alright, so the idea is, I need to get uh, 30 points of spectral vision to see these glyphs which are hidden around a little castle that's at the center of Central Park. And I get spectral vision by destroying tentacles. <clears throat> now these tentacles give out a fixed amount and they're in fixed locations around the map. And I have a route. Now this first route's fine. It's pretty easy. It's only like you know, seven of these tendrils that I have to destroy. But I have to come back a second time and get an extra 40 points. And I have a little map that I need to follow for that. But for now, we'll just do this. Let's just park up. Let's put some. Oops, I need that. This one's. I'll be honest, it's a shame that the, the, the devs decided that this was a thing that you had to do, because it, the game gets a bit dry here. Because it's just a, it's a, it's a big, big old collectathon. 
Uh, the U-Bowl movie came, was supposed to come out at the same time as this game, but this game got delayed. So it, and the story got changed. So the U-Bowl film was intended to be a tie-in. And it still is, but, you know, thanks to the magic of... Uh, devs really biting off more than they can chew. Great. Oh my god. Edward. Edward! Drive, you poor fool. Um, they kind of look like they're unrelated to each other. The, the film in this game, sorry. I haven't seen the U-Ball film, so I can't say anything about it. This one's funny. <laughs> it's like a little ramp that I launch a burning car at the tendril. No dial, uh, no sound effects. Yeah. Yeah, apply, Sly. You might have to ask somebody in chat because I have no idea. Well, see, the thing is, is a U-Ball movie might not be good, but it might be fun. And it's important when things that are bad are fun, because then they become good again. Like this game. I wouldn't say this is a good game, but I really enjoy it. I think it's a, a boatload of fun. <laughs> Whoops. That's probably not good for the whiplash. I wouldn't say it was innovative, but it was definitely uh, ambitious. I think it came out the same time as Far Cry 2. I'm not sure if this position is good. Oh, yeah, that's perfectly fine. I, sorry, I should explain. I, I used the car as a car bomb there. Um, so the fire effects aren't new. But, uh, don't touch me! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! <laughs> Oh my god, you touched me. Okay, alright. Oh, cool, a taxi. That's actually good. I can grab a, a health, health kit from the glove box. Oh, my jacket's full. I don't need the mosquito spray. So the big boys, they shoot uh, spikes from their fists. They're the guys that are throwing shurikens. And they're not zombies, they're humans with a Z. <laughs> I actually do like this tendril hunting section. It's just a bit dry. It's something pleasant about it. You know, it's not like particularly taxing. I can just kind of drive around and do my thing. I don't have to worry about anything weird. I can just enjoy myself. It's a, it's a, it's a nice little bit of downtime for me. Is there a hidden DeLorean? No, but if I could turn back time and not play this game, I would. <laughs> Taxis, Volvos, uh, cop cars, and then there's one tow truck that you use for a puzzle. Not cop cars, utes. Utes. I said cop cars, but that's the same as the Volvos. Not <laughs> particularly taxiing. <laughs> oh my god, you're a genius. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> Alright, here we go. This next one, when I played this game casually, which was only like three months ago, maybe two months ago, uh, it took me ages to figure out how to get to these three tendrils. Basically, that door is a physics object. And I just need to back up the car, and I'm awful at driving games. Believe, me. Believe you me. Stand back. Oh, 
Oh my god, that did not work. How did that not work? I got tired of playing games with you, boy. There we go. Right. Just use the forklift. Oh man, I wish. I don't even know if you can blow up the forklift. I haven't tried. That'd be funny. Get yourself soft locked because you blew up the forklift. Anyway, these boys need to go down because they will get in the way as I'm leaving. grab a spare canister and then just hightail it just leg it man run like Ned Kelly Ned Kelly didn't run Ned Kelly stood his ground and that's why he's an Australian hero all right nearly there there's just two more Um, I don't need this medical kit, uh, this, this spray, so I'm just gonna lob it at this next tendril and shoot it. And then, <laughs> again, just leg it. Whoa, what are you doing, Edward? Chuck a Bundy! <laughs> This car's a bit far away and I hate it. I wish there was a I wish there was one that spawned closer by. Close closer by? Uh but we do with what we're given. At least it has the keys in the ignition. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it, but the cars have a have a certain layout. They have set uh ignition wires. Um they have set uh keys in the ignition. Glove box inventory, that kind of stuff, and they'll spawn, spawn in set locations. There's a little bit of variation on where the cars will spawn, depending on uh, what angle you come into an area, but for the most part, it's uh, non random. Like I said before, this game's surprisingly non random. Oh, I have no. Uh, no alcohol. Hi, Aura Blackwheel. Good morning. Oh, damn it, I got rumbled. Okay, um, can somebody tell me the name of this castle? I'm sure it's a real life location, but I'm not sure. This is the one thing I didn't do any research about, you know. I can tell you if, uh, wait, what's in my inventory right now? Oh. Ah, uh, whatever. Belvedere Castle? Yeah. Burn. Alright, okay, so we chase those tendrils down for one purpose and one purpose alone, and that's to look at glyphs and shine torches at them. There's six of them hidden around this castle. And there's seven of these glyphs in the game. Six of them are here, and then one more is uh, just before, probably, again, my favourite sequence. <laughs> you guys have no idea how much of this game is my favourite sequence. <laughs> Man, burn. Oh, no. Ugh. Oh, my God. Burn! Thank you, sir. Strayan. I think the medical spray leaves the clothes alone, but over time Edward's clothing will restitch itself. I think is how it works. There's another one on this wall here.
So is this game like Silent Hill, except bad? Not really. Um, it kind of hits different beats from Silent Hill. I think it's got m more to do with Resident Evil than Silent Hill. And even then, it's not quite like Resident Evil. But I couldn't say it because I've only played Resident Evil 7. A very good game. <laughs> a very good game. <clears throat> so there's a cheeky sigil uh, hidden behind this painting. When I first started doing runs, I would always forget it was here. Very compelling gameplay. Oh, I picked up a useless item. Sarah just messaged me, man. Dude, you must be on the same wavelength as the story writers in this game. I bring this torch in here because I need something to keep the uh, the demons at bay while I get this last sigil. All right, six little signs for six little boys. <laughs> okay, hello. Uh, reload my gun, put some flaming bullets on it. There was something else I wanted to do. Oh my god, what was it? I can't remember. How are things going, Edward? Fine. So wonderful night for the end of the world. There's no little boys. <laughs> I've been reading Theo's notes. I just said the wrong thing. Oh, at this point, Edward starts getting sick of his shit, of just what's going on. He just becomes really exasperated. Once again, it just sounds so tired. Anyway, I came here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Are you fucking kidding me? Get out of my sight. That was supposed to be witty, and you ruined it. <laughs> These stairs don't work properly. Oh, I don't need this fire extinguisher. Yeah, Jeeves, there's Jeeves son, sorry. There's only one point in this game where you're truly alone in the dark. And it's only because I, you know, try and be fast. So the path of light turns out to be the moon. Now, I'm going to take a second there to, here to explain what's going on. That building over there has a giant invisible force field around it. Uh, not, it's not giant, but it's tall. Uh, and I need to destroy more tendrils so that the force field will lower itself so I can lob a Molotov cocktail over the top of it and destroy a big monster that's blocking my path. It is awful. It's so bad. It's like, oh my god, guys, please stop making me run around Central Park. <laughs> So yeah, uh, let's get out the old Alky Pop and Bullet combo. My favourite cocktail. <laughs> uh, let's destroy this tendril. I think that's too far away. Yeah, it was. I threw it at the bush. That is a taxi. That's good. That's good for me. I like that. Oh, oh no keys. There's heaps of little things that you can interact with inside of the car that are useless. You can like pull down the uh, the sun visors. You can 
honk the horn, turn on the radio, and they all do nothing. Actually, the horn is just a complete liability. You accidentally press the horn and zombies, well, humans, sorry, humans will come. Um, so I've made a choice not to use chapter select because why would you speed on any percent and decide that you can skip all the chapters? That's, you know, <laughs> makes no sense. Um, bandages, I need those bullets. Where'd those bullets go? Um, there is a version of this run which I would uh, call New Game Plus, which is starting the game not from New Game, but from Chapter Select, which eliminates the need to collect these tendrils, but I submitted this as any percent, because I am a damn fool. Oh no, I'm aware it's still a speedrun, it's just I'd rather be more entertaining and clear to you guys, rather than, you know, just sitting here doing things without really explaining, so I'd rather let you know that there's a giant force field that I need to get rid of, rather than make it seem like I'm driving around doing mundane tasks. Um, where am I going? It made me think about other things. Yeah, on the topic of, I think this guy forgot that this is a speed run. I completely forget where I'm going. <laughs> Oops, I can't drive through that. Feel the pain of the car. You can hear it revving. Goddamn baseball. Get a better sport. Stupid fence is getting in the way. Play something like AFL. It's more. Sp uh, it's less walls in it. This way. Oh man, how did that guy how did that guy stick that landing? That was bolts. Get off, dude. You're hurting me. Less fences and fencing. <laughs> okay. This seems like a bit excessive, but it's, it's badass. <laughs> I kind of want to save alcohol for a, for a uh, you know more important cause, so it's useful to just abandon the taxi and um, uh, save my bottles of alcohol for later. Is there a way to soft lock this game? Soft lock this game? Um, there's, there is, there's, it actually happened earlier in the run. Uh, there was a cutscene that played and uh, didn't complete. It wasn't like a hard lock where, oh wait, what's the difference between a soft lock and a hard lock? I can't remember, sorry, I'm blanking. In my head, a hard lock is freezing. I don't think there really is a way to solve it. Oh, you jerk. Leave me alone. Wait, what, what is that? I don't really need it. Cool. Alright. Hot wire another. My car didn't spawn. Oh, that's the absolute daggers.
there's usually a car waiting in the parking lot there for me to just like, you know, uh, just grab and go. Wait, really, Greaseler? That's cool. <laughs> One solid dude. There you go, sir. <laughs> One dude for you. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I guess there's no hard locks then. A lot of problems can be solved by restarting the game. Oh my god, come on. Oh, Jesus. Get a grip, Ammon. Oh man, now we're having a debate on what's a soft lock and what's a hard lock. Leave me alone, big boy. I don't need it. Okay. Quickly reload my gun while I'm here. No, it's not M Spy. Actually, I think I got my name before that happened. I've had this name for a few years now. Um, it's not. It's actually an Xbox Live generated username. Wait. Are you kidding me? How? You all saw that, right? A toads blew up this tendril. Why oh, didn't it? That's better. Well, I'm glad I saved that one alcohol bottle. <laughs> That's all right. One of my greatest flaws is I'm way more interested in talking with you guys and paying attention to the game. So sometimes I do miss those tendrils. It's fine. There's like backup ones I can get, but I'm. Oh, nice combat roll, Edward. That was very fancy. So honestly, who cares about speedruns? The real speedruns are the friends we made along the way, right? <laughs> Come on! Uh. <laughs> yes, yes, you run out of magic spray. Pick up that. There's so many Minalaki. It is absurd. I just <laughs> I crashed into another tree. Uh, I just wish that I didn't have to get so many. <laughs> Natural 20. I'm um, not actually, I have no idea what the, the intended solution to this one is, but this works. Like, that, that's fine. I have to wait for it to uh, give me my points. I quickly save the game. And I do a death warp. Ah. 
So it actually puts me at the top of a, uh, a big cliff face. Um, it saves time actually running around and trying to get the uh, tendrils <laughs> on foot. Nah! <laughs> Someone paid full price for this? A lot of people. Apparently this game sold really well when it came out. And yes, there are worse games out there. This is actually a perfectly functional video game. With a good story. Well, not, maybe not a good story, but well-written characters. It's just a shame that the developers were so ambitious. You know, just really... Actually, I need to pick up this. Throw your heads in, boys. Oh, it's not. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Clip through the wall, Edward. <laughs> Be my guest, I don't care. Uh, actually, it's funny you ask, Water Juice. Um, I recently found a glitch, and... I guess... You know... We're not doing anything else, and I can show you. Um, I haven't really figured out the mechanics of this yet. It's still fresh, like... You know, a couple of nights ago, fresh. Um, that gives me the ability to clip through walls, and I'm very excited to explore it further, but it's also a nightmare to use. So, like, check, check it. Fucking check it. It's so cool. I'm so chuffed that I found this. I'm really excited. <laughs> like... If... You can do it, little buddy. There you go. Alright. So this is... Uh, there's about two ladders in this game that are accessible by vehicles. There's this one and there's one on the other side of the uh, um, crack there. Uh, I can kind of... I'm calling this the odd wood. I can kind of glitch out on the ladder there. Oh, get myself caught in the car. And it puts Edward in an, a weird state. And what this weird state does is, whenever Edward turns, he gets uh, um, a bit of acceleration. So I'm actually just turning left and right. Kind of like a Hess. Like a Hess in Ocarina of Time. And you can see his chest is a bit weird. So let me just get over to somewhere that's a little bit more flat. So if I do a quick turn, you can see he's kind of moving a little bit faster than normal. Ah, well, that's a shame. But yeah, you get the idea. I can clip through the floor. And I would be able to go across the whole map using this weird speed, clip through the, um, clip through the, the barrier, and hopefully get into the end of Chapter 8 by doing that. But uh, let's just check to make sure that I've got 71 tendrils. Um, I haven't figured it out yet. But yeah, that's definitely in the works. It gets really weird. You can get some, you know, Edward, incredibly fast Edward. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can get heaps of speed and you can clip through the barrier. I've done it, I've managed to get over there once, but it's actually a really far distance. And it's hard to get all the way to that barrier without, um... Uh... You know, accidentally killing yourself or dying. So yeah, super excited. 
<laughs> Thanks for the word to support Mario Man. <laughs> it's like the only movement glitch in the game so far. Are there no other ladders that are closer? Not any that you can uh, access with a vehicle. And you need a vehicle to... Oh my god, car! We... Calm down! Um, you need a vehicle to actually... Actually, I actually want to go this way. I uh, get it. Okay, once I get to the barrier, the game will start picking up again. <laughs> There's only one forklift and it's stuck underground. I can't get it. It'd be interesting if I... yeah. Because that forklift has to hold up that door. I wonder if I can keep that door up some other way. And get the forklift on the elevator. And somehow get the forklift out of its intended region. That'd be fun. That'd be cute. Oh, careful. <laughs> So the humans will jump out of the car. Uh, if you're turning while they land, they will fall off or miss. Um, if you're not, they'll land and they'll punch you a few times before they get off. Wait, hey, hey, hey. Whoa. I'm shaking my head right now. I I, I hate how the levels are built in this game. Literally shaking my head right now. There's a hill coming up here that I actually have to slow down to go up, because if you go out at full speed, Edward will take damage, and you can die. And you will cry. <laughs> it's just around the corner here. It's past this bridge. This hill. It's slightly got too much of an incline and you have to, you know, <laughs> Take it slow. <laughs> Oi, hey, boy. <laughs> Oi, hey, boy. Uh, I've gone off road early. I need to drive up this hill. I apologize in advance. This, this barrier, I hate it. I have no idea where I'm actually supposed to throw these molotovs. Let's see how we go. <laughs> okay. So that's a barrier. And you can see a big fleshy beast behind there. So I need to burn it somewhere, but I don't actually, I have no idea where you're actually supposed to explode it. Oh, hey, first try. <laughs> Alan Wake's a worse game than this, Graved. Don't even insult alone in the dark. How dare you? Okay, I'm just gonna turn around and grab one more explosive bottle, just for insurance. This uh, this area is kind of like a point of no return. Once I go in here, there's no more items for me to pick up. So, 
let's just... Heal up, so... So we don't, uh, get ourselves hurt. Shoot this flagpole so we get our rope down. Get out the flashlight and lens and get this last sigil. Come on. Come on. Stop playing silly buggers. Look, we're not here to fuck spiders. There we go. Ah. Ah. See, I couldn't jump. All right. At this point, the game elevates to another level. It becomes something much more than what, is, what it has been this whole time. It, it somehow manages to express an emotion and a certain level of uh, epicness that you just had... I had... when I played it, I had no idea that this was coming. Also, rope physics? What are they? Pachoo! <laughs> So currently we're underneath Central Park. Sarah calls us. Hey, uh, Edward still as tired as he was fucking ten minutes ago. Surprise me at this point. So it appears that there is a second medallion. It's got to be this key we're looking for. I, I think you need both stones at the end of the path of light. Two times the fun. Okay, okay Sarah. Sarah. Assassin's Creed sequel? Soak again so you're so wrong. It's more like Tomb Raider. Execution was botched, but I think the potential was still met. met. Alright, here we go. This is so cool. I can't believe how cool this is. <laughs> oh my god, it's so cool. <laughs> Is the most recent Alone in the Dark better? I cannot tell you, but I'm, as far as I'm aware, it's awful. Oh my god, it's so cool. The torches? The weird geometry? The, like, brutalist structures? Oh. The dodgy sigil that's always a pain in the ass to get. Yeah, see, I'm telling you, boys. Prince of Persia, Tomb Raider, it's so cool. M Spy, I think I've found every reason to like this game. There's nothing in this game that I hate anymore. Even the physics have... Uh... Oh, man, what's the word? Oh, what is it? Endeared themselves to me. Alright, at this point my flashlight becomes useless, for some reason. Um, and we start doing light puzzles. These are probably, you know, the last physics puzzles in the, physics puzzles in the game that I don't skip. I hate the barrier, that is a very good point, Kato. Oh, that was probably premature. Oh no, it's fine, it's fine. Edward's got strong knees. <laughs> this room's cool too. It's super, super innocuous looking. It <laughs> gives its place Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> no wrong! The walls start moving. Ah, cool puzzle. Okay, I'm going to try and do something once. Uh, on this little skip, I haven't really practiced all that much. But you got to wiggle. You wiggle a little bit. Oh, no. Okay, all right, never mind. There is a way to get to the bottom of this area uh, without using these ropes, but... I'm bad. And so are you. Kiksu, it's so good it's bad. 
This room, I don't understand. I don't know. I don't. Somebody designed this puzzle and they made this cutscene too long. I don't mind this puzzle. I actually think it's quite good. It makes good use of the, like, right thumbstick to move objects around in space. But the puzzle that sets it up is too long and makes no sense. Like, you tell me what's going on here. <laughs> so glad, so bad, I'm glad someone else is playing. Uh, the guys in my chat think so too. <laughs> we love quoting lines from it though. It's about time. What if he tries? What if he doesn't show us the path? What if he tries to screw us? That's not an option. You hear that, Paddington? There's ways to torture a man that go far beyond the pale limits of flesh and bone. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Ah, oh, you missed out, Mikasio. Mik no, uh, Gremlin. Uh, I wasn't paying attention. So this light beam on my light, when I block it, it stops the path of the um, this platform. I don't need to do it for this first one, but this this next one, I do need to time. If you could call it timing, like it's not that hard. That's fine. Y you're right, Pelissa. It would be... Oh, I don't know. It's, it's quite obvious what the beams of light do. And I think without a cutscene, players would still stumble their way through it. Because that's what I did. I, I, I had no idea what the cutscene was trying to convey to me. And I just stumbled my way through that. Wait. couple of fire puzzles here, which are a bit out of place. This puzzle is actually way more elaborate if you don't have fire to begin with. You have to like move that platform back and forth and light it on fire with a burning stick, but you know, I stock up before I come down here. This song gets really good here. Uh, what are you doing, Edward? Come on. Alright. Alright, the only part of the game when we're literally alone in the dark. Um, I need to get my flashlight out because the uh the red dot sight acts as like a um little collision detector. And there's a maze at my feet. And I missed the jump. Um There's a little maze here that I need to get through. Did it again. Because it is epic. This is the path of light. This is what Edward has been training to do his entire life. Okay. Oh my god. This is embarrassing. This jump is not that hard. Oh my god. Ah! Now I can't even make the jump. Somebody help me. Somebody release me from my earthly bonds. There's ways to torture a man that go far beyond the pale limits of flesh and bone. Jumping too late. I 
I actually think a lot of the um, music in this game is. Okay, all right. I'm doing this. I'm doing this the casual way. Sorry, guys. We normies in here. You'll see what I mean. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, the idea is you're supposed to burn this platform down and knock this object off the top, but I've got other places to be, so I just <laughs> blow it off. This rock, you'd think it'd be important. You'd think it's like a key to something. It's just a uh, like a battering ram. And here we go, the last character. Welcome, Carrier. My name is Hermes Treesmages. And I am your key. <laughs> In such a court. <laughs> I have to show you something quickly. Um, okay, it'll appear in a sec. Reunited. At long last, so the stone finally found a worthy carrier. Excuse me? What the hell are you talking about? I am a carrier like you. I split the stone in two when I understood it had deceived us. I crippled it for our own good. A battering ram is not a key. Come on, you guys. <laughs> over my for centuries, I have remained in this room. For centuries, the other half of the stone was traveling from hand to hand. Murdering corrupting, corrupting men. men until finally it came to you. I guess I should explain something. The stone, there's two halves of it. There's two halves of the stone that Edward's carrying. Um, and this stone has the ability to give its bearer uh, immortal life. That's why Edward's 100 years old and that's why Hermes is still able to talk. Mind you, he doesn't uh, look too healthy. <laughs> Not only is my heart, look, Clemens, I've got nothing else going for me. <laughs> the final gate is a sort of crazy, dried up, sewn up eyes, transvestite. He's Hermes, the key we were searching for, and I must bring him back to room 943 in a hurry, because a serious countdown has just begun there. <laughs> Some good news. Uh, there's just one little problem. And I'm supposed to find this surprising? As soon as I completed the lock, some sort of countdown started. Theo's notes say there's no way to stop it. You've got to bring back the key before it runs out. Or? Or? Well, the notes just say that all doors, doors will be shut. Locked. I'm pretty sure that means we're fucked. <laughs> pretty sure that means we're fucked. <laughs> you really know how to motivate a guy. You're welcome. I'm still working on the text of the prophecy. I'll let you know if I find anything. In the meantime, hurry. Hey. Transvestite is not transgender. I know. We need a car to carry your venerable ass to the museum. We need a car to carry your venerable ass to the museum. Oh my god, Edward. <laughs> Who wrote you? Who loved you? <laughs> okay, you'll see a countdown timer. It's largely meaningless. They give you so much extra time when you're doing this section. Oh, uh, no, you're totally right, Clemmies. It is Max Payne's voice. It is. That's Max Payne that you're listening to. Uh, the voice of Edward. Alright, so there's a little... Uh, there's a little wheelbarrow in the back of this car. The dream is to get it to the end of this driving section. Breaking news, Edward. Wait. Hey, hold this for me, okay? What kind of artifact, artifact is this? How is this, Edward? There's a soul inside. The um, Sarah. He's the key. Don't ask me why. No kidding. No kidding. Anyway, Edward... Everything begins and ends now. You only have a few minutes. From what I've read, you need to get here. <laughs> I mean, sitting in the passenger seat looks so silly. Now get going. 
Okay, all right, that little wheelbarrow, the dream is to make it to the museum with that wheelbarrow still inside of the car. So let's see if we can do it. And we're lucky it's locked in place right now, but that won't last long. Oh, brighter and brighter. All right. First boss is this hill. Oh, still, still locked in place. We're lucky. This could be it, boys. This could be the one. It's useless. Believe me, I built this system. Man, this is really lucky. I have to kind of pay attention to the road in this section, which is a shame. I would love to be talking. Oh no! No, no, no! Whoa, 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 whoa! No! <laughs> we lost it! Uh, that was a good run, though. <laughs> But yeah, I really have to pay attention to the road in this section because the cars are just so slippery. Shit. The second spear has reached the bottom. The second, second symbol is lit. I can see the third spear. Oh. Edward, this guy knows everything. We must stop, stop this. this. Only I can. I'm the key. <laughs> oh, Hermes, I love you, man. You are my key. The key to my heart. I'm gonna go off road for a sec. The fourth symbol is shining. There's only one remaining. I hope you're gonna make it. We will make it. We deserve it. You, you only deserve my foot straight into your balls. <laughs> Sarah, who loved you? God. She's so well written. Okay, this jump's a bit iffy. Hey, clean. Am I going to die alone here? Cleaner than Hermes, at least. Where are you, Edward? Is the world going to end like this? Wait, hey, what? Um, I'm sure you guys have forgotten already, but there's a villain. Uh, his name's Crowley. <laughs> oh my god, fit through the door. Oh, nice. Interesting, Interesting skills, skills care. Actually, it's surprising that you mentioned the Simpsons game because somebody in my chat the other day was like, you should speed run hit and run. And I was like, no. Crowley, hey man, what's going on? Here's a man who walked the path of light. Was it a pleasant walk? Really starting to piss me off, Crowley. Pow. Forklift would have gone through that door easy. Bullshit. Bullshit. Magical stones, monsters, prophecies. No, that, that means, means shit when you've got a bullet in the head. Does it, Crowley? Freedom is the highest of all natural oh, shut up, Hermes. Freedom to take or spare a life. The choice is free. But a man is then slave to the consequences. Maybe. But this one was a real son of a bitch. Follow me. Follow me. Okay. Hermes has a tendency to get him away, so I've got to be quick. Alright, so here's that iron helix, and you can see the balls falling from the top. It's so cool! It's just... It's so cool! <laughs> the countdown was to the end of the world. <laughs> That's how you handle an hostage situation. Honestly, Mikasaurus, I wouldn't even call Crowley a villain. He's more of an old friend. He just gives Edward courtesy calls and then... It's a little bit inconvenient, but not so much more than a friend is. Ikea lamp. <laughs> uh, so... Hermes is basically the Vitruvian man. And this fucking... It's just so cool! <laughs> 
Uh, so this is coming up on the end of the game. There's only like a couple of actions left for me to make. So uh, timing ends when I shoot. Inspired by the stone. Build this temple with the help of wise men. I don't know this dialogue very well. We thought it a gift to all humanity, but we were each of us betrayed by the stone. But you this want me to is the umbilicus between our yeah. world and the next. This is Lucifer's door into our world. Bam. Your stone carrier. There are two endings in this game, and thank God that the faster ending, the be the good ending is the faster ending. Okay, just slap that stone down. I don't know this dialogue circuit against it, but I do know the dialogue that comes after it, and it's so good. It's so good. Look at how cool this seems. <laughs> this game has so much potential. Honestly, like, more people should like this game. The universal balance is restored. It is time for you to face him. Any ideas? Do I have to kill him or what? I don't know. The prophecy ends with a paradox. Lucifer's failure is also his reincarnation. Damn it, Theo. You, you could have told me more. Theo literally the told you nothing. The ring light announces Lucifer's arrival. When the light has filled the nine circles of the gate, Lucifer will be incarnated. Boo. Oh, stop. Be still my heart. This game is just... I have such a soft spot for this silly game. <laughs> The stone is once again complete. Take it to face our enemy. Okay. So what happens here is Edward picks up the stone and Satan tries to manifest himself through his body. So Sarah takes the stone away. And there's two options. You can either spare Sarah or you can kill her. You want to kill her. Shoot her, maim her, die. <laughs> I've made my choice. All right, get ready for the best dialogue you've ever heard in a video game. Get ready. Here it comes. The last free act of man was murder. So is his first free act. Oh, so spooky. The smile? I'm not a man anymore. It's not the good ending, it's the better ending. As in, it's better. It's more funny. We're enjoying. I'm the light bringer. I'm the fucking universe. <laughs> Men will stand against you. Did you think I would come alone? Oh, Tom, I forgot to tell you to stop the timer. I was enjoying myself too much. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess you're gonna have a 245, but that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We're all good. Yep. So that was Alone in the Dark. It's probably the best game that came out in 2008. It's certainly better than Mirror's Edge, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Thanks everybody for